Welcome to the Bible in 365 Days. This is going to be episode 12, and we're going to be going over chapters in Genesis 36, 37, 38, and 39. Chapter 36. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughters of the Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Holibama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, and Bashimath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebajoth, and Ada bare to Esau, Eliphaz, and Bashmath bare Ruel, and Aholibama bare Jewesh, and Jalem, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau, which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. And Esau took his wives, and his sons, and his daughters, and all the persons of his house, and his cattle, and all of his beasts, and all of his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan, and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches were more than they might dwell together, and the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's son, Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Esau, Ruel, the son of Beshemath, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gadam, and Kenaz. And Timnah, the concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Ruel, Nahath, and Zerah, Shama and Mizah, these were the sons of Beshemath, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Aholibama, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife. And she bare to Esau, Jehosh, Jamlam, and Korah. These were the dukes of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, Duke Teman, Duke Omar, Duke Zepho, and Duke Kenaz. Duke Korah, Duke Adam, and Duke Amalek. These are the dukes that came of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Ada. And these are the sons of Ruel, Esau's son, Duke Nahath, Duke Zerah, Duke Shama, Duke Mizah. These are the dukes that came of Ruel in the land of Eden. These are the sons of Bashamath, Esau's wife. And these are the sons of Aholibama, Esau's wife. Duke Jehush, Duke Jalem, Duke Korah. These were the dukes that came of Aholibama, the daughter of Ana, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, who is Edom, and these are their dukes. These are the sons of Seir, the Herite, who inhabited the land Lotan and Shobal and Zibion and Ana. And Deshon and Ezer and Deshan, these are the dukes of the Horites, the children of Seir in the land of Eden. And the children of Lotan were Hori and Hemem, and Lotan's sister were Timnah. These are the children of Shobal, were these Alvin and Menahath and Ebal, Shepo and Onim. And these are the children of Zibion, both Aja and Anna. This was that Anna that found the mules in the wilderness as he fed the asses of Zibion, his father. And the children of Anna were these, Dishan and Aholibama, the daughter of Anna. And these are the children of Dishon, Himdan and Ishban and Ithram and Shiran. The children of Ezer are these, Bilhan and Zavan and Achan. The children of Dishan are these, Uz and Aran. These are the dukes that came of the Horites, Duke Lotan, Duke Shobal, Duke Zibion, Duke Anna, Duke Dishan, Duke Ezer, Duke Dishan. These are the dukes that came of Hori, among their dukes in the land of Seir. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Eden, before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. And Bela, the son of Boar, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Dinaba. And Bela died and Jobab, the son of Zerah, of Bozrah, reigned in his stead. 
And Jobab died, and Husham of the land of Tamani reigned in his stead. And Husham died, and Hadad the son of Bedad, who smote Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his stead, and the name of his city was Avith. And Hadad died, and Samla of Masrachai reigned in his stead. And Samla died, and Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his stead. And Saul died, and Balhanan, the son of Achbor, reigned in his stead. And Balhanan, the son of Achbor, died, and Hador reigned in his stead. And the name of the city was Paul. And his wife's name was Mahitabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Misahab. And these are the names of the dukes that came to Esau, according to their families, after their place, by their names, Duke Timna, Duke Alva, Duke Jetheth, Duke Aholibama, Duke Elah, Duke Pinon, Duke Kanaz, Duke Timon, Duke Mibzar, Duke Magdil, Duke Iram. These be the dukes of Edom, according to their habitations in the land of their possessions. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. Chapter 37 And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Billah, and with the sons of Zippah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brothers, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear me, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee on the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. And his brethren went to feed their father's flocks in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed thy flock in Shechem? Come, I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks. Bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. 
And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilad with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Medinianites merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. And when Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it is thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son's mourning. Thus this father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Chapter 38 And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. And she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Ur. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived and bare a son, and called his name Shelah. And he was at Shazib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass, when he went unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Then said Judah to Tamar his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow, at thy father's house till Shelah my son is grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. And in process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up into his sheep shearers to Timnath, and he and his friend Hira the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garments off from her, and covered her with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and he was not given unto him to wife. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be a harlot, because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way, and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. And he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me, that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Wilt thou give me a pledge till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it to her, and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. And she arose and went away, and laid by her veil from her, and put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, 
to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said, There was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, Let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass, about three months after, that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar thy daughter-in-law hath played the harlot, and also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her be burnt. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are am I with child. And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet, and bracelets, and staff. And Judah acknowledged them, and said, She hath been more righteous than I, because I have gave her not to Sheila my son, and he knew her again no more. And it came to pass in the time of her travail, that, behold, twins were in her womb. And it came to pass, when she travailed, that the one put out his hand, and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. And it came to pass, as he drew back his hand, that, behold, his brother came out. And she said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Perez. And afterward came out his brother, that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zerah. Chapter 39 And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar the officer of the pharaohs, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hands. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass that after these things, that his master's wife cast her eye upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused, and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in this house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph, and showed him mercy, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prisons committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, 
he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And this will be the end of episode 12. I added an extra chapter to this edition, and I think it worked out really well. I can't wait to finish up the story of Joseph. Thank you all again for joining me, and have a blessed day.